What's up guys, my name is Technobo here for Troubleshoot and today I'm starting a new series on setting up and running your Rust server successfully. So of course, this video, as you know from the title, is how to actually archon into a game server's Rust server. So what exactly does that mean? Well, of course, if you're going to be hosting a Rust server, you need a computer to host it on that runs 24-7 and has a reliable, good internet connection. As you may or may not know, DDoS attacks are a thing, etc, etc. Your PC may not be powerful enough. Well, there's a great, easy way to get your own server up and running very easily, and that is to use a service such as game servers. Now, there's a couple of upsides to this and a couple of downsides. The upsides are that you have basically guaranteed uptime running all the time with really good internet, really good hardware, and the more you pay, the more you get. Usually you pay per slot, but that's besides the point. You can have a look at the rest of that yourself. Most of the downsides are you don't know how to set up your own server after paying the monthly fee for it and actually going through setting it up basically. There's a lot of things that we need to do to set up a successful Rust server. And in order to do that, we need two things. We need access to the files themselves for plugins and extra settings. And we need access to the actual server console so we can change variables, set the time of day, etc, etc. A lot of things that you'll need to be doing, such as giving yourself admin, and the rest will be done through Archon Access, which is remote console console access, and the console is the thing actually running the Rust server. That being said, how exactly do you go ahead and punch in commands from your computer and get them to work on the game server's Rust server? Well, you need Archon access, and you don't get that through the game. Of course, you can if you do a bunch of console commands, but there's a ton of easier ways that give you way more access. So to begin, we need to get our actual login details from game servers, set up a Rust server, pay for it, etc, etc, and then log in. Of course, once you're logged in, you'll see all of these servers on the left-hand side, whether they're running or not, and hopefully they should be running because you'll need them running in order to actually archon into it and start running some commands. So we'll go ahead and hit config next to the server you want to archon into. Once you've done that, you'll see a page similar to this. Now, of course, I've actually changed most of the stuff here so that you can't go ahead and log into my server itself. However, yours will look something similar to this. So we're gonna need to go ahead and open up a notepad file just so we can make notes of what these are for now for later use. So I'll simply go ahead and copy these out one by one. There we go, I've copied everything that I need out of it. The server IP and port, which is where players connect to. Archon password and port, which is the details that we use to actually get the remote console access. And query port, I don't think is important. However, I've listed it here in case we need it later. That being said, you don't need to worry about Archon IP. It's set to 127001, which is a local loopback for the actual computer that's hosting the server itself. So you don't need to worry about that. That being said, let's actually go ahead and download the software that we need. It'll be linked in the description down below. So what software do we need? It's simply called Rust Admin or the Rust Admin Archon tool. There's a ton of these, some online, some that you download. I wouldn't specifically recommend using the online ones because you don't actually know where your information is going. I guess you could say the same for using one that you download to your PC, but I would much rather trust a tool that you download. This one is very good for use from what I've seen, and it's easy enough to set up that basically anyone can understand it. That being said, you can use any tool you want. However, this is the one I'll be using in this demonstration here. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit the download button right on the main page and simply hit download again. And then we'll download a zip. Click on it to open it once it's done. And I'll simply be dragging and dropping it out onto my desktop. Once you've done that, you can close out of the zip and delete it if you like. All we need is the folder that we extracted. So let's double click, open it up. And then we're gonna go ahead and double click on rustadmin.exe. Hit run when prompted, and luckily you won't need admin to run this, so you can run this on basically any computer. Next up, you'll be very confused with what's going on, but first of all, we actually need to connect to the server to use basically anything. So we'll head across to configuration at the very top. We're gonna make sure to change it from experimental to web archon. I've had much better experience using this. However, you can use these other two if you'd like to try them out. I wouldn't specifically recommend it. Next is the IP address, which is the server IP that we copied earlier. So I'll copy and paste that in. Server port, we'll copy and paste that in as well. And then we have the Archon port, which is what we copied earlier, and not the query port. So we'll paste it in there. And then password is obviously the password that we copied earlier. Paste it in, and that's about that. I'm gonna go ahead and check auto reconnect as well as auto connect on startup so that when we start this program, we don't have to go server connect to actually connect to the server. Auto reconnect just means that if you're restarting your server or updating it, it'll try and reconnect every couple of seconds until it's done successfully. 
Then we need to go ahead and hit save at the very bottom. I've gone ahead and blurred what's up here because I've put in actual information rather than the sample one that I just created myself. So that aside, let's go ahead and give it a name. I'll click in here, control A and backspace to get rid of everything. Then we'll name it something like test server. Of course, you can name it whatever it is. If you're running a 5x server, you can put in 5x followed by your name. It doesn't really matter. We'll hit OK. And this is configuration saved. OK. Then, as you can see, because we had auto reconnect checked and auto connect on startup, it has now connected to the server. It says at the bottom over here. Then it says over here, you must disconnect Rust admin from the server before you can make any changes in the configuration. If you feel like you need to change something up here, all you need to do is go to server, followed by disconnect. But instead of doing that, let's actually go ahead and demonstrate the power of this program. So these tabs at the top, console is this over here we have the in-game chat that'll pop up here when people join our server and start playing oxide is as far as i can tell oxide specific information oxide is a plugin for the server that we'll get into in another video that allows more plugins and add-ons to be added such as automatic closing doors password sharing clans etc etc and console is where we're going to be spending most of our time unless we want to chat to the server which we'll use at the very top so console and down here at the very bottom, we have type a chat message, which will obviously send a message to the server and type a command to execute. Note these are different. The one in the top box will be sent to the chat in game and everyone can see it. So I'll say hello and hit enter to send it. As you can see, the current time, say hello. Where it says say, this will be replaced with a user's username. But I'll demonstrate that probably in another video. The bottom right, we have a quick commands which we can go ahead and add for quick access later, such as wiping a server or giving someone a role, etc., etc. You can set that up here by typing in a command and hitting add to add it to a list. And then as you can see, right click on a command to execute. So that being said, I'll simply enter env.time, add, and then right click on it, run. If we go across to the console on the left hand side, so we'll close out of this console, you can see the environment time is reflected here. Up here is more information about the chat message we sent earlier, but it's going to be this big all the time, so you can just ignore this. This is just extra information telling you the color of the chat message, the username, user ID, the actual message, etc, etc, in as far as I can tell a JSON format. But you don't need to worry about that unless you're coding yourself some plugins. So let's go back to quick commands, right click run, and you can see that it pops up every time I do that. We'll close out of it. Scheduled commands, you can add one in here by clicking new. And as long as you have this program open, it'll run these commands whenever the local time on your computer is reached. So I'll go cancel. Okay. Triggered commands. You can hit new command. And then here you can get something to run when a user logs on, logs off, chat message is sent, population of the server changes, a helicopter drop is created, or a cargo plane drop is also created. You can execute the command on a specific player if you type in the Steam ID of the player over here and then the actual command down at the bottom, and you can have multiple by separating them with a semicolon. And then we have the highlight system over here. So if we hit add, you may be confused with exactly what this is. So this is something for you and you only. This doesn't apply to the actual server. So if I go line contains env.time color, we can set a color for the message that will show up here in console, oxide or chat. So I'll go with acid green. In fact, let's go with red. Play a sound, you can obviously get it to play a sound, but I'll be avoiding these. And apply on tabs, chat, oxide, console. So if I hit create filter, you can see that n of dot time is now highlighted in red. Of course, once this pops up, it'll happen with new commands as well. So if I simply go to type a command to execute at the very bottom, env dot time, enter, you can see it pops up in red. Had I set it to play a sound, the sound would have played. If I go to chat, you can see it's absolutely empty. But if someone in the server were to say env.time, it would pop up in red for you and you only. This doesn't apply to the server itself. Heading back to console, you can see over here where we mentioned the metadata for the message earlier, env.time. However, the color for the actual message in game is EEE, -E -E, which is white. At the very bottom over here, we have console filters and we can create a new filter. And of course, I don't fully understand what this is. I haven't found documentation for this program. So this video is probably going to serve as that. So I do apologize that I don't know exactly how this works, but you can choose a preset filter such as Archon, Oxide, Better Chat, FPS, Envy.time. So if I go ahead and click on one of these and click hide, you can see that if we hit create filter, 
then you can see that all of the env.time messages from earlier are now disappearing from the console. Of course, this one down here is not because it is in fact in multiple lines and it's stored somewhere on a different part of it over here. As far as I know, it only applies to one line as you can see here. However, I don't know that fully, so I'll be avoiding that for now. If we were to right click on the filter that's here, go to edit. Now here's the part where I don't fully understand it. I'm not exactly sure what the show does because if I were to hide everything and then say show a line containing say this number over here, it would not reappear. So I'll go ahead and demonstrate that now. Copy the text, edit, hide, save, new filter, paste in the number and go to show, create filter. You can see that that line does not reappear. So let's go ahead and show env.time, right click show. And as you can see, the number is over here. If I were to go right click hide on the actual number as a filter we added down here, that line vanishes because it had that bit of text in it. So I'm not exactly sure what the show does, but it does something I'm quite sure. Anyways, that is the main page where we'll be spending most of our time. Server config, you can change the server time, reset resources, change the weather, and enable or disable animal AI or moving ability. And then you can go save configuration to actually write it to the server and save everything. We have a right arrow up here and a left arrow. Here's another one that you might not have seen called server infos. You can also get to it by scrolling up and down while hovering over this bit of text. Here's where we can change the server host name, change the server URL, change the description and the image. And then here's some more detailed information at the very bottom, which we can refresh whenever we want. So this is where you'll be spending most of your time. When you want to interact with Oxide, you'll type it in at the very bottom over here. I type a command to execute, such as oxide.reload space star to reload everything. But I'll be getting into a specific Oxide video in the future. As you can see, the server does not even have it installed at this point. Players shows information about people on the server. Up here is where they'll appear with their name, Steam ID, country flag, etc, etc, and a bunch of information about them. Bans allows you to manage bans on your servers, as you may have guessed. Steam ID, you'll paste it in here, hit ban, boop, it'll be added to the list. And if you want to right click or remove, you can. Then of course, you can IP ban someone to prevent them reconnecting on another account so that they can continue cheating or causing havoc in general. So I'll be banning myself. I've simply gone onto Steam ID, entered my username and converted it from a website on the internet. I'll paste in my Steam ID and hit ban. You can type a reason, so I'll just type test, OK, or hit enter. And if we hit refresh in the bottom left, you can see my ban up here. So Steam ID, nickname, etc, etc. IP as well, these are not showing because I banned myself while I'm not connected to the server itself. So these bans are stored on the server and not in your Rust admin application over here. If I were to right click on myself, you can change a bunch of information such as unbanning, copy reason, copying nicknames, etc, etc, or even sharing it. By clicking share, I'm not exactly sure what it does, and clicking it seems to do absolutely nothing. If I go back to console, console's clean, oxide, and so is chat. Anyways, I'm going to go ahead and right click, unban myself, refresh in the bottom left, and I'm now gone. You can also filter for usernames, IP addresses, Steam IDs, etc, etc down here if your list is very long. In the statistics tab, you can find information about your server. Under players, you'll see a player's PvP statistics such as kills, deaths, and PvE deaths. And under server, you can see a graph of how many people were connected to the server, etc, etc, for last hour, last day, last week, month, and forever. As far as I know, you need to have this console open the entire time in order to actually collect this information. Anyways, I'll be going back to powered users at the very top. So this tells you all the information you need to know about this. So I won't really need to explain it. It's all written nicely over here. Configuration is back where we were earlier. And there's a couple of tabs on the left hand side, which we didn't get to earlier. NC Cheat allows you to change settings locally on your PC. As far as I know, these don't sync with the server. So auto kick players without any Steam ID, auto kick players using family share. That is probably something about VAC bans, etc, etc. And you can also ban them or kick them based on game hours, VAC bans, etc, etc. Anti-cheat abuse is specifically for chat spamming, etc, etc. And anti-bad language, which is a swear filter down at the bottom here. Then others is where there's a bunch of other things such as kicking for hyping for too long. Chat regex changes how the chat messages show up under the console tab where it says chat. Of course, as it says here, configure the regex used to parse chat messages below. You should not change a setting unless you know exactly what you're doing. 
so obviously I'll be avoiding this. Auto response allows you to obviously auto respond to settings from the console itself. That is of course when this program is running. Anti-invalid character name, this is for people who use invisible names and those little smiley faces and stuff like that, that fill up chat, etc, etc. You can do that over here. Then of course, player whitelist. If you enable this player's whitelist, it will only allow these Steam IDs that you add in here to stay on the server itself. As soon as someone without the correct Steam ID connects, they'll be kicked, as you can see, instantly. So, say you want to change one of these. First of all, we need to go server, disconnect. We can change these settings on all of these tabs. Then we can hit server, connect. These are all under the configuration tab and gray out when you connect to the server because these are all reliant on this actual console program itself running on your PC all the time. About, this tells you some information about this Rust admin program, etc, etc. So anyways, that's a super simple crash course for the Archon administrative tool, which I'll be using mainly for game service tutorials. However, when I get to a tutorial that isn't specifically related to game servers, I probably won't be using this. However, if you want other people to connect into a server you're hosting locally or on a virtual private server somewhere, then you'd probably tell them to download this tool. It's not specific for game servers or any specific hosting platform for that matter. As I said, I will be doing more Rust videos and the playlist will be linked down in the description below if you'd like to see more server hosting and administrative tips, tools, etc, etc. My name is Techno, Technobo here for Troubleshoot and I'll see you guys next time. Ciao.